ito ang nakakagulat na sa 300 inmate ang target na mabigyan ng executive clemency sa 65 na kaarawan ng Pangulong Bongbong Marcos sa September 13 ayon sa pahayag ng DOJ nitong Martes magbibigay sila sa Malacanang ng listahan ng 300 na inmate na posibleng mabigyan ng executive clemency ayon sa pahayag ng DOJ spokesperson na si Miko Clabano It's purely up to the OP or Office of the President and the OES or Office of the Executive Secretary to choose who will be granted executed clemency. Traditionally, ginagawa namin ito tuwing Pasko. This year, at least sa administrasyong ito, isusumitin natin ang listahan sa kaarawan ng Pangulong Bongbong Marcos Jr. Ang tanong, makakalaya na rin kaya si Del Lima? Matatandaan nga na nanawagan din ang mga politiko na dapat raw ay palayain na si Laila de Lima. Kaya naman maraming ang netizen ang tumutol sa panawagang ito. Ayon nga kay Damian Dizot, huwag palayain ang girlfriend ng mga preso. Napakalaking kasalanan ang ginawa ng ahas na iyan. Sa taong bayan, life sentence ang dapat sa kanya para di pa marisan. Ayon naman kay Fe, not at all, di po dapat na makalaya siya. Dahil di pa siya nasisistensyahan ng tamang verdict tapos until may allegation na may kalakaran pa ng drugs sa loob ng BOC. Ay naman kay Anisha, walang karapatan si Delima na makalabas sa kulungan. Ang dapat lang sa kanya ay habang buhay sa kulungan. Ay naman kay Purita Gatongay, no executive clemency for Delima. It's too short time for her to recognize the evil that she did. Ay naman kay RC. Pagbayaran niya muna ang mga kasalanan niya na hinaharap. Ay naman kay CRB, please no freedom for the lima. She doesn't deserve this freedom. She has to suffer more as the drug victim suffered too because of her. Ay naman kay Mylene Rubin, no for the lima because of drugs relation. Pag pinalaya yan, dadami na naman ang addict at criminal. So big no po, Mr. President. Ay naman kay Ariel Francia. Huwag bigyan ng executive clemency si Delima. Maaga pa dapat pagdusahan niya ang kaso niya. Ayon naman kay Amadeo Ulandat, hindi pwedeng palayain si Delima. Mas malaki ang kasalanan niya kaysa mga paruhinog kasi DOJ siya tapos protector pa ng drugs. Malaking sampal yan sa bansa natin, di ba? Ayon naman kay Manuelo Cristino, hindi dapat palayain si Delima. Kaya naman kung kayo ang tatanungin ko mga kababayan, Pahayag ba kayo sa panawagan na dapat napalayain na si Delima? Anong masasabi nyo dito? Comment down below at narito, panuorin natin ang buong video. Uh, council, uh, ang ating public council, uh, Pau uh, Presida Acosta, tungkol po sa survey po ng lahat na nakakulong sa lahat ng kulungan sa buong Pilipinas, tinangi ko sa kanila na ikutin po ang lahat ng mga kulungan at alamin kung sino ho ang pwedeng pakawalan na na mas maaga. Sapagkat ang congestion po ay madala, kadala sa po ay cost po niyan ay inefficiency ng maraming bagay. Kaya andyan po ang public authorities office upang alamin po ang kondisyon ng bawat na kapo. Privilege hour, we recognize Senator Amy Marcos. Magandang hapon po, ginang Pangulo, aking mga mahal na kapwa senador. Tumatayo ako sa pagkakataong ito tulak ng aking privilegyo magsamang personal at kolektibo. Sa tuwing tayo ay magdiwang at kumanta ng ating pambansang awit, ibinubunyag natin ang lupang hinirang. Lupang hinirang para sa mga magsasakang hinirang. Ngunit wala pa rin silang kapirasong lupa maangkin o mapakinabangan ng kanilang pamilya. Palapit na ang ikadalawampu't isa ng Oktubre at lalampas na ang ikalimang dekada ng PD-27 ang pagpapalaya ng mga magsasaka sa pagkaalipin ng lupa. Ngunit bigo pa rin ang marami nating magsasaka na mapah sa kanila ang munting bahagi ng ating bansa. Lupa na kung tutuusin ay yaman ng bawat Pilipino at ng buong lipi. Panahon na wakasan ang pagtiis at dusa ng ating mambubukid at ipamahagi na na walang utang at buong puso, lupang binubungkal at sinasaka nila araw-araw ng ilang taon nang nakalipas. In truth, the history of land reform in the Philippines is a long if convoluted one. 
beginning with the Public Land Act in early 1903 and through various Commonwealth laws authorizing the President to acquire private land for resale to tenants. Following independence, the Philippine Congress enacted further land reform acts in 1955 and 1963, attempting to abolish shared tenancy and providing support services to new farm owners. But it was on the 21st of October in 1972 that the comprehensive and mandatory agrarian reform program was launched by then President Ferdinand E. Marcos, decreeing the emancipation of all tenant farmers, sharecroppers, and agricultural workers from the bondage of the soil, identifying large tracts of rice and corn farmland. PD 27 mandated government expropriation of land without need of any farmer's petition. All areas cultivated under tenancy and sharecropper arrangements deemed subject to agrarian reform. Vigorous execution of this decree affected the immediate breakup of vast agricultural estates in Luzon and elsewhere into three to five hectare parcels. In 1988, CARP, or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, expanded its legal coverage to the so-called plantation crops of sugar, cacao, coconut, rubber, and all other export and commercial crops previously excluded under PD 27. Controversy and protest hounded CARP and its successor, CARPers implementation from the outset so that until today, the agrarian reform program under DAR remains incomplete and still uneven. Then the pandemic hit with deadly virulence, causing a public health emergency that ravaged the economy. On September 11, almost to the day, two years ago in 2020, this chamber acted swiftly and decisively, passing RA 11494, the epic COVID response legislation of Bayanihan II. With the urgent goal of protecting the populace from the worst effects of the pandemic, Bayanihan II also included in Section 4M a groundbreaking exemption for agrarian beneficiaries from interest payments for the period of the emergency. This single provision in our law had impactful results, with 7.228 billion worth of interest payments from 272,320 agrarian reform beneficiaries waived, waived in addition to 887 million worth of excess interest payments from 112, 785 farmers now credited to the principal interest of the loan. In fact, some 8,987 8, farmers were able to fully pay their loans solely from excess interest payments credited to the principal loan. Following the 18th Congress Historic Initiative, next week, our new president, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, will sign an executive order further suspending payment upon the principal amount of loans to agrarian reform beneficiaries, declaring a moratorium until June 30 of next year. Thus, for the first time today, with this legal precedence upending a well-worn framework, the total condemnation for the last remaining tenant farmers their families and heirs is truly doable. I have thus filed SBN 178 and Senate Bill number 1112, DAR's less ambitious version, legislating a complete write-off of all unpaid amortizations from loans secured under all agrarian reform programs. Let there finally be free land for all remaining qualified beneficiaries. For this, indeed, is the last mile of the Philippine Agrarian Reform Program. Already 4.8 million hectares has been distributed. What remains with DAR is a workable backlog of a mere 173,339 hectares. Sa inyong mga harapan, makikita ang mga munting ribulto ng kalabaw sa isang kapirasong lupa paalala sa atin ng ilang magsasakang manguukit na nag-aabang na maibigay sa kanila ang lupang sinasaka. Huwag sana nating kalimutan. Wakasan na natin ang paghihirap ng ating mga mambubukid. Panahon ng palitan, nang ngiti ang pagod at dusa ng magsasaka. Na ang lupang hinirang ay hindi maging lupang hinarang na lamang. At ang pangako ng ating pambansang awit na lupa, duyan ng kagitingan, hindi mauwi sa lupang hinarang, dulot ay kahirapan. And if outright condonation has now become feasible, so too is it eminently viable. For truly, condonation simply makes good financial sense. 
Firstly, this proposal will generate savings for the Land Bank of the Philippines and the national government, given the absurdity that for many long years, the administrative cost for the land reform program has been bigger than its annual collections. Observe the chart shown. In the year 2020 alone, the land bank spent 1.95 billion for a paltry collection of 542 million 688603. Tama ba naman ang ginagastos natin yan? The government's remaining balance totals 8.36 billion. First, to acquire DAR's remaining backlog hectareage for 7.32 billion and 1 billion 04 for titling said land. For a change, we have more than enough money because we can now use for possible funding the con for, of condonation the following sources of funds. Firstly, 34.47 billion from the Agrarian Reform Fund, 10.22 billion from the Field Guarantee AGFP Fund. In addition, there is 4.39 billion from the PCIC share in the Agri Agra Fund. Under the new RA 11901, or the Agriculture, Fisheries, and Rural Development Act of 2022, we can look forward to additional funding of 35% from the non-compliance penalty collections of banking institutions to the DAR for titling and parcelization. Hence, not only can we afford to condone these meager farmer loans, but we have the funds to support them with services, seed and equipment, training, and finally, even perhaps agricultural modernization. May salawi kain tayo mga Pilipino na malupit, ngunit totoo naman. Ang sabi ng ating matatanda, walang ligaya sa lupa na di dinilig ng luha. Kung tutuusin, talagang bayad na ang mga magsasaka sa utang nila pagkat idinilig na nila ng kanilang luha, ng kanilang pawis at taon-taong pag-iintay na makamtan ang lupang sinasaka. Sa haba na rin ng panahon, Kung mayroon man malaki-laking bukid, pinaghatian na ng anak, ng mga apo, ng mga apo sa tuhod, ng kauna-unahang mga beneficiaries. Kaya't sa wakas, mga senador, tapusin na natin ito. Finally, if condonation is truly doable and viable today, there is also no doubt that condonation of all remaining agrarian reform debts is also the desirable end. At least 654,047 agrarian reform families will be granted a total of 1.35 million hectares of land, liberating the countryside from the burden of debt and despair. Wise men have said that the balance of power in a society accompanies the balance of property in land, and that people who lack jobs, ownership, and opportunity in land have little or no stake in their community and nation. With real assets free from encumbrances, our farmers can utilize cash originally intended for loan repayments to invest in their own properties, to buy equipment and find seed, to embark on new technology and marketable cash crops. They will then have the collateral to access capital necessary to maximize productivity and enter into profitable commercial farming arrangements. The increased output of farms will result not only in higher incomes for the agrarian beneficiaries, but also in food security for the nation, avoiding the dreaded shortages in sugar, onion, garlic, and even salt that plague us today. And thence the way forward shall open towards rural development and commercial farming on condoned lands through contract growing, block and consolidated farming, joint ventures, agri-venture agreements, all manner of fresh capital as private investment grows in a landscape of secure and reliable land ownership. Ngayon nagbabadya ang kakulangan sa pagkain, panahon ng buhay ng pagsasaka. Tuldukan na ang kabuktutan ng pag-aangkat ng pagkain, simple lang naman itanim. Kawalan din ng pagpapalaya ng mga magsasaka sa pag-aalipin ng lupa ay tumagal ng limang dekada. Ang pinakamatagal na pagpaparte ng lupa sa buong mundo kung ihambing natin sa Taiwan, sa South Korea, at pati na rin sa Japan. Ilunsad na natin ang bagong simula ng agrikultura sa lupang hinirang, bagong Pilipino, taas noo kahit kanino. Na matutupad din ang pangako ng ating pambansang awit, lupa ng araw, nuwalhati pagsinta, na ang buhay maging langit, 
para sa bawat isang magsasakang Pilipino. Wika ni Gat Andres Bonifacio, aling pag-ibig pa ang hihigit kaya sa pagkadalisay at pagkadakila gaya ng pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa. Sadyang mamahalin ng bawat may-aring mambubukid ang lupang pinaghirapan at sa wakas maihahandog na sa kanila. Mabuhay ang pagsasaka, mabuhay ang kalayaan ng magsasaka, mabuhay tayong lahat, maraming salamat ginoong Pangulo at mga mahal kong mga Senador. Maraming salamat, Senator Aimee Marcos, sa napakagandang suhestyon.